Hi, so in this video I'll be talking about the Shadow Matte shader because the version that is being shipped in M2810 has been really improved based on your feedback. And yeah, in the past to get nice results you often needed to connect lots of nodes in the shading trees like ray switches and so on. So we've tried to improve this and to make it just look good out of the box. So in this example scene I have this plate that I'm setting as an image background in my camera. I have the CG car and to get the shadowing of the car onto the ground, we've modeled the ground and we use a shadow mat to, to get this shadowing. So first thing that has changed is that uh, several attributes have been removed from the shadow mat because they were a bit confusing. Some of them were depending on whether your background was an image plane or a skyrim. So now it's all handled automatically. Here in this example, it's the most common use of the shadow mat. Here uh, we're planning to recomposite this image in post-process, which is why the alpha is transparent in these regions. Um, that's how it behaves since Arnold 5, which is that through the shadow mat you see the background of your scene, <coughs> which is mentioned by this attribute background here. I'm seeing the scene background. Some of you mentioned that they didn't really want to go through a background uh, as we did in Arnold 4, so now we can switch this to background color and what is seen through the shadow mat is this color that of course you can plug to whatever texture. The most common use would be to use camera projection and of course if I use the same camera as the render camera I would get the exact same result as here. What you could use this for is to, if you have for example several objects on which you want to project different plates seen from different cameras, then, well, that wouldn't work with a unique background. So with that parameter, you can, yes, have these different objects in your set, use different uh, shadow mats with uh, different textures projected, and in that kind of setup, you're probably not planning to use compositing later, so you don't want the alpha to be opaque, to be uh, transparent, and in that case, you might want to uncheck this new attribute alpha mask, which gives almost the same result, except that the, the alpha is now totally opaque. So if you want also reflections, you have the indirect specular. Um, the defaults have changed, so if you have existing scenes, you might have to change them to adapt them because now there is Fresnel in these reflections as we have in all the other Arnold shaders to be physically realistic. Um, so it's always enabled so you can control the intensity but also the index of refraction. If you want to dump this in the AOVs, the specular indirect or the diffuse indirect, now it's all going to the built-in uh, AOVs. So here that's the built-in one with the car's reflections and I also seen the reflection on the ground. Before there were some separate AOVs just for the shadow mat, indirect uh, specular and diffuse which was a bit a bit confusing. So now all of them go through the, the built-in. Another difference uh, in this version is about self-reflection. Some of you have uh, complained about shadow mat self-reflecting self onto itself. So here, if I had modeled this mountain, for example, um, with the shadow mat, in the previous version of M2A, I would have seen here the reflection of the mountain into the ground, which is wrong because if, well, the ground was really reflective, I would already see the reflection in the plate itself. So uh, we must never have self-reflections uh, between different shadow mats. So that was removed automatically. Uh, and uh, yeah, you have now much, much better results than before without having to connect lots of nodes in the shading trees.